mention it because people with different life experiences just approach problems differently. And the, the example I think about all the time, you know, I'm the CEO of the Planetary Society, the world's largest non-governmental space interest organization advancing space science and exploration so that people everywhere will know the cosmos and are placed within it. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, we built a solar sail spacecraft, and we have a second one that's going to fly in June on the second SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket. Very cool. But the people who build it are almost all from the U.S., and so they, we designed a spacecraft that looks like uh, you went to Home Depot and got tape measures to be the booms, and we use the term boom just like on a sailboat. But I spent a lot of time, a lot of people involved in solar sailing are from Japan, Japanese aerospace exploration. And their solar sails, they've flown one and they're planning another one, another big one, huge one. Uh, they're very much like origami. Just their approach. The U.S. one looks like we're folding. Old, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And and so they both both systems had advantages and disadvantages. But I mention it because it's something from my experience that's clearly so cultural. And so, what is the best way to do it? I don't know, man. But both ways work. And by working together, you're I'm sure you're going to get a better <laughs> spacecraft. So. Uh, uh, by the way, speaking of SpaceX, well, by, I always carry, I always carry a Canadian fiber. I, I can't accept that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's not available. <laughs> I was with a guy from the White House. He was quoted in the paper to Phil Larson. He said, "Can I have that?" No, no. <laughs> but on the back of your money, you celebrate the space program, ways ways you used to. And so uh, I can't tell if. It's Chris Hadfield. It's Chris Hadfield. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's wearing a helmet with the visor down. It's hard to say. But I, uh, I mention that because uh, Canadian Space uh, Space Agency for years has a reputation. Can I take this off? You, can, you look so comfortable. You know how to do that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The other hilarious joke is, you know, in television, that the clapboard, you know, like this, that if you're, if you're, then you go like, like it hits you in the head. It's really funny. <laughs> okay, I, according to me. But uh, Canadian Space Agency used to be, or is, really involved in every space mission around the world. Uh, everybody uses an instrument from Canadian Space. So I really encourage uh, Canadians to pursue space, invest in space, because uh, it leads to innovations. And by and I mean in the traditional sense of innovation, new ways of doing things. Yeah. Because you solve problems that have never been solved before. Well, not, not only do I agree, but uh, we just uh, appointed as our Governor General uh, a candidate, one of Canada's great astronauts, Sergei so Payet, who is, uh, oh, who is right. uh, an amazing scientist. Yes, yes, yes. Right, and is, uh, is focused on leading the charge uh, in, uh, in space, in science in investment the same way uh, Kate Young, our permanent secretary for science, and our minister for science, Kiersey Duncan, who's a Nobel Prize winning scientist, uh, as, uh, is driving, drove this review into fundamental science, and is excited about the kinds of investments we need to make. Uh, just let me, just, uh, if I may, the way to go. Uh, two, two things I'd really like to see in your lifetime. <clears throat> the first one is finding life on another world. At the planetary side, we like to say life in our lifetime. I claim that if we were to find evidence of life, this would be, I mean, in the best case, some microbe that's still making a living on Mars or Europa, the moon of Jupiter with twice as much seawater as the Earth, or Titan, the moon of Saturn with similar ocean conditions. Uh, if we were to discover evidence of life, it would change everything. It might just be a stromatolite, like a fossilized pond scum. That would be extraordinary. And the other thing is that it's a, it's a real thing, is we don't want the Earth to get hit with an asteroid. And you know, I, I, you know TEDx, you know those things. I may have mentioned of this at the TEDx, and go, ha ha, everybody laughed, ha ha ha, an asteroid, ha ha ha. I was a grown up. I was working uh, in, at that time, I guess I was at Sunstrand, working on avionics, uh, black boxes. And uh, when the crater off Chicxulub, Mexico was discovered, so when I was in second grade, 
Mrs. McGonagall, my teacher, read to us from the great big book that the reason the ancient dinosaurs went extinct is because they had small brains. So the mice and the rabbits took all the Tyrannosaurus food. No. And she was just like, that's ridiculous. I mean, come on. There's a rabbit, I'm a Tyrannosaurus. You know? <laughs> and so it was really in my lifetime that the best idea of what happened to the ancient dinosaurs was discovered. And in my grandfather's time, there was no such thing as relativity. No one had any idea what it was. It didn't, it didn't affect his life. Uh, the world kept spinning, people navigated the world's oceans and so on. Understood, beginning to understand some remarkable things about the cosmos, but no, no relativity. Yet everybody here, is there anybody here who does not have a mobile phone? <laughs> yeah, okay. That's right. Well, there's one, there's one. Anyway, people, thank goodness you're here. You know which side of the street you're on without looking at your phone. But that information comes from outer space. And we all, if the weather reports off 20 minutes, people start complaining, and that's all from outer space. I know I, I, I don't have much to do up here because you guys could go on for hours, Lucky but I would you. like to uh, invite uh, two young female oh, researchers yes. Yes. to the stage. And first off, uh, Caitlin Miron. She's identified a chemical compound that may be able to switch off cancer cells in order to stop them from spreading. Caitlin, can you please come up here? Caitlin is a PhD student at Queen's University, so thank you for joining us. Ada Hellage. Ada, you were born, come on up Ada. You were born in Lebanon and received your Bachelor of Science at the Lebanese University in Beirut. Please welcome Ada Haida. Well, we started talking about women and how we need more young women in science. The two of you are fantastic mentors, and I want to get a sense from you if you were challenged, if it was something that you really had to fight against to make sure that you continued to find your way in science research. Caitlin? I certainly, um, I've had some very excellent mentors um, since undergrad, I would say, who are women in science. One of them is my supervisor. So it was never really a fight, although I guess my dad was disappointed I didn't do engineering. But uh, all you did was cure cancer. That's all you did. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm really upset. <laughs> I mean, Caitlin, do I understand this that you may have found a way to turn off cancer cells? So it's it's moving in that direction. So we were coming up with chemical compounds that can stabilize particular DNA architectures that when stabilized are kind of like barriers and they prevent access to particular sections of DNA um, that will promote events leading to cancer. So we're not at the stage, we're doing fundamental research. This was a discovery more for the sake of discovery, um, but we are seeing that there might be applications down the line. I mean, that could just change the world. <laughs> we'll see. So, you know, uh, well, what drives everybody? What it's a really a fundamental thing, um, and then uh, Ada, if I may, excuse me just a second. I had a, something I had not thought about till this year. Uh, we did a show on time travel, Bill Nye Saves the World. And we had the, <laughs> you know, the Sandy Show. Uh, we had Brandon Braga, who you may not have heard of, but yes you have, he, he's the producer of all the Star Trek movies. And he pointed out that any time travel story whether it's Wrinkle in Time, which is coming out as a movie now, uh, is really, a time travel story is really about death. And if you think about, it's about our de dealing with it. If you think about what really drives you to cure cancer, or to make the discovery about, to really unknow our place in the cosmos, to find life on another world, to innovate, to include more people, it's really about our time here on Earth and doing the best we can with it. And that's why uh, I'm really so excited to be here with you all, uh, because Canada, under your leadership, 
It is embracing science to improve the quality of life for everybody in our time here on Earth. It's really, it's really a, curing cancer is really an amazing idea. And you're sitting here with somebody who may have made a discovery that would affect the way everybody thinks about his or her future. Ada, tell us about your research. Well, I'm uh, currently I'm uh, doing a, I'm a PhD candidate. I'm working on uh, synthesizing some nanoparticles and especially supported nanoparticles. Why supported? Because we're going to do heterogeneous uh, catalysis. In this way, the separation of the catalyst after, do, after doing the reaction will be like easy with no contamination of the product that we're going to make. And our objective is to my work, I'm, work, I'm working on applying those uh, nanomaterials into heterogeneous catalysis to act as a catalyst in order to form a desired product, which is a valuable molecule as a precursor in the pharmaceutical industry or uh, even in like some, like some additive for animal, uh, for in food or in perfume. So I, so far, what I have done so far, like two types of different reactions. The first one is to make anthol, which is like one of the main additives in the food industry. And the second one is to make a cross cutting and form a compound that is, has a triple bond. And this compound is a precursor for lots of molecules that can be like valuable molecules. Uh, currently, I'm working on uh, uh, taking those uh, glass wool fibers, so something like new and innovative, like something like really creative. And the idea is to functionalize the surface of those fibers. And now you don't have a powder, you have fiber, and just decorate with nanoparticles, then apply the new material. Yes, sure, decorate. The one is like better to decorate than doping. When we say doping, it means it change the properties of the material. So we try to use like a, the right word, like it means like depositing like on the surface or like decorating. Decorate. Decorating, let's say. <laughs> use some art like stuff. Uh, decorating those glass wool with different metals. So we we did with palladium, gold, we tried cobalt, uh, ruthenium, uh, copper as well. This like something not expensive, and applied in some organic transformation. And the idea is for potential use for the flow system, in order to make like a big amount of product. And then we have another project that I'm not involved in. I'm involved just in decorating the glass wool. The project is uh, to do a uh, water purification for Kenya. So we have a, a collaboration with a uh, university from Kenya in order to do this type of water purification. And this the project will involve uh, not the glass wool fiber, the type 2 fiber, and decorating those type 2 fiber with uh, metal nanoparticles. TI2 is titanium Titan dioxide. Yeah, titanium dioxide. Yeah, titanium dioxide. Yeah, yeah, don't, uh, don't, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> titanium dioxide, yeah. But here's the thing, my claim, there's three things we want for everybody in the world. We want clean water, yeah. reliable, renewably produced electricity, yeah. and then access to the internet. Access, well, whatever the internet, whatever the kids, whatever the kids call the internet in the coming decades. So you're I think they've created something called MySpace. They want us to. <laughs> I heard, yes, I heard about that. It was all the kids are using the kids, the kids with their record uh, phone machines. So you're working on increasing food production and uh, cleaning water. Cleaning water. I'm going to call it green chemistry. So green we'll chemistry. It's a more heterogeneous mites conditions instead of using heat, using light, because I'm from a photochemistry lab. So using a light as a source, as a catalyst in order to drive reactions. So it's more like my, like room temperature. Well, it's not room temperature because when you're shining light, so the temperature will, will be like up to 40, 50, but still, like it's not 100 or 200 degrees. And atmospheric pressure, so it's more like green chemistry. So that's what I'm involved in. So I, I like. <laughs> Obviously very passionate about what you're doing. How do we encourage more young women 
like the two of you, to get involved in, in science? Well, I certainly think that the, the budget coming out um, with that emphasis on promoting women in science is certainly something that will be valuable, uh, for sure. I was really excited to see that. Um, and I think it comes down to, for us, it's really important that we have role models.